Okay, number eight. Simplify fully this fraction here. Okay, these questions are nice and simple, thankfully. Now, the, and the trick is, is to simply look up and down and cancel common terms. So let's take it step by step here. So let's work with 15 over 5. 15 divided by 5 is just um, 3. So put 3 here. k to the power of 4 over k. So when you're dividing terms, you subtract the powers. So think of k as having a power of 1, yeah, because it's 1k. And 4 take away 1 is 3. So we're left with k to the power of 3. And then you do the same for the next one. m to the power of 3 take over m to the power of 2. You divide and so subtract the powers. 3 take away 2 is 1. So we're left with m to the power of 1. And you can just write that as 3k cubed m. And we can leave it like that. Now b. Solve the inequality. Alright, so for this kind of problem, just imagine these are two equal signs, yeah? And you just uh, and the objective is to get x between two things, alright? And to do that, we need to firstly deal with this minus 1 and then deal with the 4. To do that, we can firstly add 1 across, so we're going to have 8 on eight on this side and add 1 here, you're going to get 18. And lastly, we need to divide by 4. So dividing by 4, you can get 8 over 4, which is 2. And 18 over 4, well, put that in your calculator, you're going to get 4.5. You could leave it as a fraction, no problem, but it's always good for inequalities to leave it like this. Okay, ah, and that's it. Okay, number 9. So Omar invests 6,000 dirham for four years in a savings account. He will get 1.5% per year compound interest. Okay, so this alone tells us we need to use the OV formula, which is OV times one plus or minus array will give us a new value. And now because we're dealing with multiple periods, like four years, we put a power of four here. Okay. Okay. Work out the total amount of interest Omar will receive by the end of four years. Give your answer correct to nearest dirham. Okay, before we work out the second bit, let's go ahead and um, update these values, what we know here. Yeah? We know that the original value is 6,000. We're going to increase it, so we use a plus value of 1.5%. So ignore the negative, because you're not decreasing. And we, and we charge that by power 4. And then when you do this, you get the answer. So put this in your calculator, and you'll get exactly, roughly, 6,358.18. Uh, to two decimal places, yeah? And now finally, this, and by the way guys, this is the money you get after four years, yeah? Now the question here wants us specifically to work out the total amount of interest Omar will get. Now the interest is literally the money, the extra money added on from the original amount. And if you look at the two values, you can see that 6,000 has gone all the way up to this amount. So go ahead and do your answer you just got right now. Minus is by 6,000. And then you'll be left with the interest component. And if you do that, you're just going to get exactly um, 300 and... 68.18 dirham and that's it and now the question wants us to give your answer correct to the nearest dirham so in other words the nearest whole number so your answer is just basically 368 dirhams and we're done okay number 10 so simplify fully this expression here okay these questions are super easy if you know a trick now every time you do a powers and there's no plus or minus signs literally distribute the power to every single term so the 16, for instance, will get 16 to the power of a half. The x, which already has a power, will get an additional half. And the y, which already has a power, will get an additional half as well. And now we just tidy this up. So 16 to the power of half, you can just put that in the calculator, literally, and it'll give you the answer of um, uh, 4. Now for the second bit, you've got 8 times a half. So when the powers are on the same level, you just multiply, yeah? So 8 times a half is 4, so it'd be x to the power of 4. And same thing here, y and then 6 times a half is 3, so y to the power of 3. And we're done. Now for B, they want us to solve this um, fraction problem here. Show clear algebraic working. Alright, for every single algebraic problem guys, yeah, and this is general, you would always want to clear the fraction, because fractions does not make it easier. Now notice how you've got 3 and 2 here. Now what I would personally do is multiply... Um, is multiply the common denominator of both here. Yeah? So if we go 3 and 2, we can say 3 times 2 is 6. So we're going to multiply the whole equation by 6. And before you do that, guys, always wrap a bracket around these because I'm going to show you why in a second, yeah? When you times everything by 6, we're going to have 6 times 8 minus 2x over 3 minus 6 times 2x minus 3 over 2 equals 4 times 6, which is 24. Now we can go ahead and simplify some expressions, yeah? Notice how you got 6 over 3. These two cancel out and you'll be left over 2. And you got 6 divided by 2 will be left over 3. So we literally have 2 
times the bracket, 2 times 8 minus 2x, and 3 times 2x minus 3. So let's do this here. Expanding the bracket now, we go 2 times 8, which is 16, minus 2 times 2x is 4x. For the next bit, we're going to have a minus 3 times 2x, which is minus 6x. Next one, we're going to have minus 3 times minus 3, which is plus 9. And all of this is equal to 24. And yeah, now here's the easy part. Now, all you want to do is collect like terms, yeah? So you've got 16 plus 9 is 25. Minus 4x minus 6x is minus 10x, all equal to 24. Now, let's go ahead and move um, 10x to the minus 10x to the right. So it becomes a plus 10x. And we're going to move minus, uh, 24 to the left, so it becomes minus 24. So subtracting 24, you get 1. Adding 10x, you get 10x. And finally, to get x, divide this by 10. And you're going to get 1 over 10, or 0 0.1. And that's it. And now finally, for part C, they want us to make f the subject of here. Now, these are literally my favorite kind of questions. And to do this very easily and quickly, you see you've got a square root here. Let's get rid of that square root. So the opposite of square rooting is squaring. So if you do that, you're going to get m squared, and that vanishes. Oh, and one more thing, yeah? you got one third times ef. You can just stick this together. 1 times ef is ef over 3. And by the way, this is also recommended, yeah? Now, next step is to, what we're trying to make, f here. Yeah? Next step is to clear the fraction, so times 3 across. You get 3m squared equals ef. And now you want to separate these two guys. So to separate e from f, divide it. So you can get 3m squared over e equals f. Okay, number 11. So we've got two straight lines. One has this equation, and the other one goes through two points. Now, Michael says that both these lines are perpendicular. Okay, so we're going to question what that is in a second. Is Michael correct? All right, so first things first here, before we even answer this question, let's go ahead go ahead and try and make two equations here. The first thing is to always rearrange these equations or create an equation in this format, which is y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is a constant. Now, if we look at line L1 for a second, we can kind of see that they've almost done it, but they got it in the wrong form. So all we have to do is just rearrange and make y the subject, yeah? So let's just work with line L1 for a second. So if we subtract x across, we're going to have 2y equals, um, and I'm going to put x first here, minus x plus 4. And then I'm going to half this. So we can get y equals, instead of writing minus x over 2, I'm going to write minus half x. And half of 4 is 2. So over here, we can see that we have a gradient for this line of m equals negative half. Now, one thing to note here, yeah? when they say two lines are perpendicular, Perpendicular means that both lines are at a 90 degree angle from each other. And to prove something's perpendicular, the gradients need to be a negative reciprocal of each other. In other words, we need to sh either show or show that is wrong, that the gradient of the second line will be the negative reciprocal of this first gradient. Now, reciprocal means you flip upside down, so it'll be 2 over 1. And negative reciprocal means you flip the sign to make it positive. So the gradient of the second line must be a plus 2. If we get plus 2, then he's correct. If we don't, then he's incorrect. Okay, so that's the target, yeah? We need to see if we get this one. Now, for line L2, let's work with it. To get the gradient of a line, there's literally a beautiful formula. The, the gradient is literally the change in y over the change in x coordinates. Now, the change in y, we look at both y's. We've got minus 7 and 9. So we subtract them. It'll be minus 7 take away 9 over the change in x, which is minus 1 and 7. So minus 1 take away 7. And doing so, and just to see what you guys get, you should get, oh, you get exactly two. So yeah, so therefore, because the gradients are um, inversely, what was it again? Is an inverse reciprocal, therefore they, ha they are perpendicular. So okay, number 12. So Freddy recorded the number of runs he scored in each of the 11 cricket matches, and these are the results. Now, they want us to find the inter-quarter range of his results. Okay, so every time you have a list of data like this, which is not organized, always rewrite it in um, numerical order from smallest to the biggest value, yeah? This is going to help you calculate either the median, the quartiles, or even this one. So let's go ahead and do that first, yeah? So start with the smallest value, we just tick and cross. We have a 0. Next smallest is a 4. And then we have a 6. And you just keep on doing this, yeah? 9... Nine and 102 okay and just count the values yeah 
you should you should have 11 pieces so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 okay so now to find the interquartile range we do it like this let's go ahead and find the median first yeah? just split this up equally if you've got 11 pieces of data the middle should be around here around 21 where you got five on this side and five numbers on that side the first quarter would be here where you got two here and two here the third quarter will be on this side so you got two here and two here so all the numbers have to be equally distributed now the interquartile range will be the difference between the third quarter which is 51 and the low quarter which is six so it's 51 minus six and that's going to give us 45. so the interquartile range of his results had a difference of 45. okay number 13 Carlos, Flavia, and Tazia shared 861 pounds between themselves. Okay, so let's go ahead and start writing equations for this, yeah? So we can say that C plus Flavia plus Tazia shared 861 pounds, okay? So that's how much they had all together. Now, the amount of money Flavia got was is 65% uh, of the amount of money Carlos got. So we can say that Flavia had exactly 65% of Carlos's amount, okay? Next step. The amount of money Tazia got is 22% more than the amount of money Carlos got. So to literally summarize that short, Tazia had the same amount as Carlos plus an additional 22% extra of Carlos's amount. Now, work out how much money Carlos actually got. So this is a case of, an, and the beautiful thing, thing about this question is this is a case of literally substituting all these layers F and T with everything in terms of C. And then you can just solve to find what Carlos got. But before we do that, let's go ahead and simplify every step here. So for the first one, 65% of C. 65% in the calculator is 0 0.65. And off is time. So it'd be 0 0.65 times C is 0 0.65 C. Now for Tazia, C plus 22% of C. So 22% is 0 0.22. This is like 1C. So 1C plus 0 0.22C is 1.22C. And that's the second variable. Now all you guys want to do is substitute both of these into here and here. Okay, so you can get something like C plus, instead of F will be 0 0.65C, instead of T will be 1.22C, and it's going to equal 861 pounds. And now we just solve to find C. So add, so collecting your like terms, your C terms, is 1 plus 0.65 plus 1.22. If you put this in the calculator, you, you're going to get 2.87 Cs equals 861 now just literally divide that across so you have 861 over your answer you're going to get c equals exactly 300 pounds and that's how much carlos had 300 pounds since you know the value of carlos you can also find the value of uh, tazia's amount and also flavi's amount but they just want c